The Sahel, stretching from Senegal in the west to Eritrea in the east, is home to over 100 million people and marks the frontier where human habitation and agriculture meet the Sahara Desert. Farmers in these drylands have been managing crops and livestock together with scattered trees for generations, creating the vast agroforestry parklands that dominate the landscape. In these parkland systems, indigenous trees are essential to local livelihoods as they provide food, medicine, fodder, fuel wood and timber, as well as ensuring soil and water conservation and climate regulation. But for decades, the Sahel has been synonymous with high vulnerability to climate change, land degradation, desertification and worsening food insecurity. Recently, widespread regreening in parts of the region has happened because farmers have encouraged the regeneration of young trees that grow naturally in their fields, a practice known as farmer-managed natural regeneration which is being heralded as a cornerstone of modern climate-smart agriculture. For families like the Diaras, who depend on the parklands, farmer-managed natural regeneration is beginning to make a positive change in their landscape. But they have also realized that they need to give nature a hand by actively planting some trees in addition to nurturing what comes up naturally if they are to meet their subsistence needs and improve their livelihood. The continuous loss of parkland fruit trees, like the shea tree, is of particular concern to Sahelian women like Ruth Diara, who depend on these products for their livelihoods. Farmer managed natural regeneration builds on an ancient tradition of tree management and is a promising low cost technology. But recent research findings show that it needs to be adapted to work across the diversity of conditions in the Sahel. These range from sparse and thorny shrubs in the arid north to denser, taller trees in the less arid Sudan and Guinean zones in the south. Population density, market access and ethnicity also vary greatly across the region. These differences in local contexts are sometimes overlooked, but are very important to identify options which can be adapted to the local circumstances. For example, 
Drought-resistant species such as Guiera senegalensis, Piliostigma reticulata, some acacia species and Phyderbia albida are very amenable to natural regeneration in the more arid zones, but do not fare well as rainfall increases, either because they are simply not ecologically suited or because farmers prefer other more economically valuable tree species in less dry conditions. I I'm <laughs> Sanavara, Yudobe, Cotonu, Lu Vara. Mais, quand on y remue, on peut quand on le boit, peu, 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 ou quand on est chie, nerre, à l'insra. Bon, on le moue, follow Yerama. Tiens, on va me tourner, on le boit, là, puis on le boit, mais ton nom, c'est comme le boit, Yerama. Donc, voilà, non, ma cause, c'est vraiment ma boit, peu. Pour agroforestry researcher Kone Brehima, Farmers' preferences for arranging trees in their fields to be compatible with their farming is also of critical importance. Allons-y d'abord avec la régénération naturelle assistée. C'est une bonne pratique dans le cas où il y a moins d'investissement. En tout cas, cela a moindre coût parce que s'il faut passer par la pépinière, ramasser le substrat, mettre ça dans les pots, s'aimer, arroser, tout ça, c'est une technologie lourde par rapport aux paysans. La régénération naturelle ne suffit pas. Pourquoi Et Parce que vous voyez bien, ça, il y a plusieurs demandes. L'autre aspect serait quoi C'est de s'investir à ce que les espèces soient mieux arrangées, c'est-à-dire les espèces en rang, les mettre en rang, bien arrangées, et tout le champ. Et comme ça, quand l'outil est là, l'outil aratoire, la machine peut passer et ça ne pousse aucun problème. Research has revealed that over time, the degree of disturbance that the parklands face causes regeneration mechanisms to fail. Proactive tree propagation then becomes necessary to deliberately regenerate a diversity of trees in different niches on farms and in the landscape. Farmer-managed natural regeneration needs to be supported by other practices and underpinning research such as enrichment planting and the domestication of key fruit tree species, especially those with regional and global underexploited market potential like the shea tree. Selecting and promoting drought-tolerant varieties that thrive in Sahelian conditions is important to adapt to climate change. Appropriately supported, these suite of options can lead to a diversity of trees in the landscape that underpin a productive and resilient agriculture. The CGIR Dryland Systems Research Program, in a joint platform with the Forests, Trees and Agroforestry Research Program, are supporting farmers by researching and integrating local and scientific knowledge to explore what different tree species, management, and marketing practices are best suited to sustain parkland regeneration and productive agriculture, to develop more resilient livelihoods and landscapes in the Sahel that will reap both local and global benefits.